If we look at aluminium, we see that the global aluminium end-of-life recycling rate is, well, it's about 50%. Um, that's unlike most metals, because for most metals, this recycling rate is actually much lower, sometimes even below 1%. But for the, well, the, the large-scale metals such as steel or copper or aluminium, recycling rates are already substantial. And in some countries, it's even much higher. In the European countries, we, um, we are close to 90% for recycling rates for aluminium. So 90% at least should be technically possible to achieve that in the world. Those were the end-of-life recycling rates, but secondary production rates are much lower. They are much lower than 50%. At the moment, they are only 20%. And this is due to the rapidly growing demand. When these applications go into the economy, you see that there are really long delays due to the lifespan of the applications. It's used in buildings, and buildings live for, well, sometimes even 50 years. It's used in, in cars, which may live for uh, 20 years or so. So when um, a certain amount of aluminium flows into the economy, it takes time before it gets to the waste stage. And that means that after demand has stabilized, an equilibrium situation will be reached only 20, 30, 40, or even 50 years later. Now, all this information is relevant to sort of get a picture of when the circular economy for aluminium may actually be established. So what does all of this mean for the time horizon? We have to make some assumptions, of course, if we calculate stuff. And an optimistic scenario uh, starts from a stabilization of the population at a not too high level, at 9 billion people, by around 2050, which is also quite an optimistic figure. Um, another optimistic assumption is that the stock in society will build up rapidly, so the demand per person can level off. Um, if we combine those two uh, assumptions, we see that the demand will stabilize around 2080. Assuming a lifespan of 30 years, the equilibrium situation will then have been reached 30 years after 2080, so in 2110. It will be nearly there, as you can see in the graph, in 2100. So that means that it takes a century to reach that equilibrium. And that's really a quite a long time. The good news is that it will happen more or less by itself. Population will stabilize, the demand per person will also stabilize by itself if people get rich enough, so that's indeed under optimistic assumptions. And then um, when the delay caused by the lifespan of the applications is passed, then this equilibrium is established. The bad news is that there is not a lot that we can do to speed this up. There are various options also discussed in the earlier episodes, like reuse, repair, remanufacturing. This can lengthen the lifespan of the applications and therefore reduce the demand. And the equilibrium situation with a certain stock will be established with a smaller inflow and a smaller outflow. But you can see also that the delay will be longer and therefore it will take longer for the circular economy to establish itself. Mm -hmm.